playoffs are back. We are in Dallas right now. Shout out to Vegas Night and Day Heating and Cooling for sending me here. And of course, the Jimerson Law Firm for presenting every Periscope after games this season. Playoff games are here. The Golden Knights are up. The Golden Knights have won another playoff game. That is three in a row for anyone who's counting going back the last year. This one's slightly less important than the last one. Uh, you, what do you mean you can't see me? Can you not see me? What are you talking about? I think you, oh, oh boy, what's going on? All right, hang on. All right. There we go. Hello. We are here. The Golden Knights win again. That's what I'm talking about. Finally figured it out. I got a new computer and it apparently doesn't like me. That's okay. We are here. The Jimerson Law Firm presents all post-game periscopes after the game. I am in Dallas at American Airlines Center right now celebrating a Golden Knights win in game one. The first ever road game one victory for the Golden Knights. Can't believe that. I, I saw that this morning. I'm like, wow, that's pretty wild. I would have thought they've won it. However, they were uh, two and one in those series. Three and oh, if you don't count, have bullshit. Hashtag not a major. Nonetheless, they were up one to nothing. Golden Knights have been up one to nothing many, many times. They've won most of those series and I expect them to do it again. One out of 16 is right. The Golden Knights played an excellent defensive second two periods it got better and better and better as the game went along that is the moral of this story to me I understand we're going to be looking at 15 shots we're going to be looking at how they generated some of the offense we're going to be seeing blue shadows on top of my head because they're changing the ribbon board directly ahead of above me but what is important in this game is what happened in that third period Golden Knights come out up four to two. Now, I understand what we'll talk about the second. We'll go over that in a bit. The first was wild. We probably don't even need to go all over that too, too much. But what happened in this third period is what was very, very important in this game. It was very crucial how they went about making sure that they took all of the air, not only out of the building, but out of the Dallas Stars. They turned the Dallas Stars into exactly what the Golden Knights have the ability to turn the Dallas Stars into, and that is how you find ways to win games. Now, I do think it's important they're going to have to find a way to generate more offense. Cassidy talked about that. I don't really think they did all that much defensively to generate offense, which is super rare when they play against this particular opponent. Usually when they play a good defensive game, you see those breakouts, you see those two-on-ones, you see some of those rushes that give the Golden Knights basically all the offense they possibly need. That's not what they got in this first period. They worked for that offense, drew the penalty, got the two power play goals. Uh, second penalty, not very good. I didn't really like that. And then they kill off the one and there's a McNabb high stick. The offsides, there's a couple other offsides. I didn't think this was a particularly great referee and linesman game. And it pretty much all went in the favor of the Golden Knights. We will take that in a road game uh, as the defending champions. Heck yes, we will take all of that. But... Some of that does potentially come into play down the stretch. That being said, back to that third period and what the defense looked like, there were two big portions of it. First off, they were very, very good at getting back to the puck quickly. Hannafin was excellent at it. Theodore was probably the best I've seen him all season at it. Uh, White Cloud was much better. Haig obviously leaves. We do not have an update on Nick Haig, but they were much, much better as that game went on. And it felt like, to me, the second period started to kind of open up. The neutral zone opened up a little bit. You started to see some of these opportunities where you would see Dallas getting across the zone with a controlled entry, Vegas not exiting as well as they were. That's why I thought the second period was a little bit concerning going into the third. Like, eh, what's this going to look like? But as we move forward, as we got there, as we got to that point where we say, okay, now third period, let's not make, let's make sure nothing happens from here on out. That was where they were able to really start getting that gap better in the neutral zone. I thought all day the reloading was good. That's a huge part of the Golden Knights game. They've got to back check. They've got to get above pucks. They've got to find ways to make sure that it is difficult to get controlled entries against them. 
But when they aren't there, when it when they are able to throw the puck in and that happens, then getting back to the puck is super important. They were excellent getting back to the puck in the third period. That's why in this particular game, you see that third period is effectively a clinic defensively. That's what you want. That's what we're going for is getting that defensive clinic against a team like this that will then at that point say, okay, we will take possession. We will throw pucks from the, from the point and we will try to get tips. Vegas started getting behind the player and stick checking much better than I thought they've done most of this season. In the first period, they started kind of looking at, do we want to stay behind them? Do we want to get in front of them? And they seem to be kind of caught in between. They started to front a little bit more with the forwards and really get up and be close to the players uh, trying to make these tip chances. Beyond that, then the second part of that and the part of that that honestly coming in concerned me this season, even with all the players back in the lineup, even with everything landing in place as it has, what concerned me was a lot of these opportunities in front of the goal where Vegas is trying to block the shot, trying to tie up sticks, trying to do things to avoid that tip chance getting through. When the puck lands and stops there in front of the goal, They weren't as good this season boxing out as what they were today. And that's why for a majority of that third period, there's basically nothing going on. Unfortunately, Logan gives up the goal. It gives them a ton of life. And there's an opportunity for them to potentially get back in the game, flip this thing on its head and and give another home team a win. By the way, seven and one in the NHL, eight and oh in the, uh, NBA home teams won all the games except right here at American Airlines Center where the Golden Knights were the only team that won an away game in the in game one of any basketball or hockey playoff series wild that that has happened 15 and one in Vegas was the one it has never been 16 and oh you're welcome rest of the world but defensively It's unfortunate that you see that chance because once that puck goes through, once you get that goal and now all of a sudden you can feel them saying, well, it's not two anymore. It's one moment away. Their four check picked up. They started to do a lot more that really put the Golden Knights under pressure until six on five, something we've talked about basically this entire season. Six on five has been an issue all series or all season long. Today, it was very good. Not only did they force Dallas to not be able to set up all that much. Secondly, they were really tight on on that zone. That zone was really good at not only forcing the puck to the wall, but then when it got to more dangerous areas, it expanded directly onto these players and gave them nowhere to go. Beyond that, The first exit pass was good. The pass getting it out into the neutral zone was way better than it has been most of this season. Unfortunately, not able to get that shot down the ice and put it in. Mark Stone missed a couple of them. I did not like the one. There was one clearing attempt I really didn't like for Michael. Other than that, I thought it was really, really good throughout the entirety of that six on five. That brings me to the next point, which is in the first period, Neutral zone was way, way too wide open. Vegas's breakouts were decent to good, not great in that first period. You were seeing the opportunities of them getting some rush chances. You were seeing a little bit of over-pinching, over-aggressiveness, a lot of what was going on there. And And then that led to Dallas having all this opportunity. The best thing about the Golden Knights last season, in my opinion, beyond anything else, the number one reason why they won the Stanley Cup last season was because they were finding ways that they were struggling and they fixed them immediately, sometimes inside of games, sometimes game to game. And what happened in this particular game is they went into the locker room despite having a lead, despite playing a period that you shouldn't feel that bad about. I think I rated it a six out of 10 in the first period. Like that's okay. Considering what's going on, all the players coming back in your lineup, all of this, when you go back in there, they said, wait, that wasn't good enough. Zero block shots, not good enough. Neutral zone, not good enough. Reloading, getting forwards above the puck, having centers in the middle of the ice having good gaps at the blue line for these opportunities and as it went on they got better and better and better I thought they ran out of gas in the second period which is something that I'm a little bit like looking back at and saying oh man if they had popped one goal there or maybe we don't get the kind of fortunate spray and pray shot from McNabb does this look like a little bit of a different game I'm certainly not saying like 
the Golden Knights have won the series because they've won this game. They're in a great spot, needing only three of six the, the rest of the way here. That's where you want to go. They've gotten home ice back, which is massive because Vegas has been way better at home than they have been on the road. So that's another big part. Mission's already accomplished here, and we've got another game on Wednesday. Even if you drop that one, it's fine. You come back. In that second period, though, it got better. It improved with how they were getting above the puck, how they were stick checking, how they were finding their ways into lanes and making life more difficult on the breakout passes, the stretch passes, and all the stuff in through the zone. As they struggled to get any offense in that period, you did see it start to decline. Now, long change is a huge part of that. You have to go a lot farther to get back to your bench, and that leads to a lot more time in your own end. They went almost 18, 17 minutes, something of that sort, with just with no, with zero shots. They had one shot that went in. There was one shot before that, and they didn't have a shot between one minute elapsed in the second period and like 18. So that portion of it, it was just waves and waves coming at them. But the end zone was awesome in that second period because they finally started finding a way to block shots with sticks. Blocking shots with sticks was way, way better in the first period. Obviously, they had zero as it went on. It got even better in the third period. It was very difficult for Dallas to get anything off their stick without a guy within stick length jabbing his stick at it. The best example of this in all of the game was at six on five. There was, or maybe it was a power. No, it was, it was six on five. They had some chances. They moved the puck around. They got it to Robertson. He kind of comes downhill a little bit and there's a, there look like there's a lane. He goes to shoot it. There's a Carlson stick. It ramps up into the, into the roof. It actually went over and into the stands, all that. And the golden Knights get out of that without even having a puck get anywhere near Logan Thompson. That is winning hockey. That is looking at what you did wrong, finding out that you need to be better despite having the lead and should be feeling pretty good about yourself and executing it immediately inside of that game. That is why Dallas was snuffed out. Now, one of the other big stories to me that I think we, we need to look at going forward is this budding love or whatever we want to call it for Hurdle and Stone playing together. I'm probably going to write about it. We've got some good quotes about it, but I want to just touch on it here. But first, I want to tell you that all my road travel is brought to you by Vegas Night and Day Heating and Cooling. There's an ad right there up on your screen. It is almost summer in Las Vegas, which means it is going to get hot. Believe me, I've lived there long enough. Every single summer, it gets hot. Every time. Never fails. Unbelievable. Craziest thing I've ever seen. Because it gets so hot, you have an air conditioner that you might need fixed at some point. So go to Vegas Night and Day Heating and Cooling, VKDAC.com. Sign up for the $50 pre-maintenance special. Have them come out. Check out your air conditioner. Get that thing fixed before you even realize it's broken. Trust me, it's way better. Air conditioner goes off, and it's 116 degrees out. Your face starts looking red like mine did, thanks to this Dex imaging ad directly above my face. Back to what I was saying with Hurdle and Stone. The biggest thing that I noticed in this particular game, even more so than what I thought we were going to see, which was them holding on to pucks, them making nice give and goes, having a hurdle in front of the goal, a lot of what was going on there. The bigger part to me is how great they were defensively in the neutral zone. Hurdle's defense was excellent, holding up the middle of the ice and funneling pucks towards Mark Stone. It's something that they talked about that I really find interesting is while they were both out, uh, while there was the knee injury for Hurdle and the, and the spleen thing for Stone, they were in the locker room watching games together. They were at each other's houses watching games together. Wherever Hurdle probably was at Stone's house. I doubt Hurdle has a house yet. He probably is going to get one. He's here for a long time. But that is a big portion and a big part of what they are going to be able to do. If they can utilize their big bodies and their excellent defensive sticks to force pucks towards each other and away from Stevenson to just allow Stevenson to work back and then come forward when they do steal the puck, not to say Stevenson can't play defense. He can. He can get above the puck. He can make these plays. But they are excellent 
excellent in finding ways to get those turnovers and hit it to Stevenson. We did not see that spring pass that sent Stevenson out that got us the good opportunity, but if they continue having good defensive sticks in the neutral zone, they're going to see a lot of that, a lot more offense coming from that style of defense. They both score on the power play. I cannot draw up a better situation than Mark Stone standing directly in front of the goal in the, in eh, he's maybe 15, 20 feet out. No one near him doesn't have to skate. There was a guy off to his left, but he wasn't really do anything. And you knock the puck down get it in, get your goal one minute in. That's the type of thing we're looking for seeing. That is what you want from a guy who's been out for as long as he was out. He did seem to take some of the booing personally. I wonder if that's even going to get stronger and stronger as we go. Uh, Last year, it was more the other team's players going at him. This year, it's the fans going at him. I think the other team's players are probably also going to start going at him too. But I do think that that is an interesting element to what's going on is that seemed to kind of bother him a little bit, went out of his way to mention it in the post game. So uh, that's one we'll keep an eye on. The next thing is the style of offense that they had to stop Dallas from getting. Dallas is a great rush team. You look at the the first goal, or was it the second one? Uh, I think it was the first one, the Ben one. So it's a great play in the defensive end by by Wyatt Johnston. So I actually don't mind really anything that occurred on that play. Puck comes along the boards, McNabb gets pinching down, and while McNabb's pinching down, Theodore actually backs out and puts himself in the middle of the ice. The difference is when the play is cleanly won by Johnston, he hits that long pass across, and, and I'm not sure if Theodore didn't know he was back there or what happened, but he's a little bit off. Ben gets the front, scores the goal. That's the type of thing that you want to kind of eliminate. And I thought that as we move forward in this game, and that's why shot total was not nearly as high as what it was in in the first period and certainly has been in most Golden Knights games, is that what they were not able to do, Dallas, the rest of the game, was find those opportunities to get the puck out of the zone and head downhill when there are more than what two Golden Knights in the neutral zone. Sometimes it was in the first period, it was one. They were getting these opportunities. They were getting these rushes. Petrangelo blocked the two on one. There were some opportunities. As the game went on, Vegas now has the lead. They're taking less chances, getting defensemen up the ice, taking these opportunities to keep plays alive. That's something that we're going to have to keep an eye on as we move forward. Vegas led this game throughout. It was not a moment that they did not lead this game outside of what the first like 90 seconds from that moment. They're now able to play less aggressively with their blue liners, not chasing goals, not chasing opportunities. This season, defending has been a massive problem at different times for this team. Consistency has been a problem. Getting ahead has actually been a problem. Holding leads was a problem, but I don't expect that to be as bad now that the full roster is back. Once they got that lead, you can kind of pull the reins back a little bit, not be as aggressive and say, look, they are not getting any rush chances. Even the goal that happens in the third period, you look back at that one and you say, that's kind of a rush chance. Yeah, it's a nothing shot. Thompson has to stop that. We've got to get better there, but it's a nothing shot, but it is off the rush. Do not allow those opportunities. That being said, I think there's two Vegas players there. I'm not even that worried about that. That third period was awesome to me. Awesome defensive period. That's what we want to see. We know they can defend against this team, especially when up. That's something we've seen this season, last season, all of it. The Golden Knights have now won four games uh, against this team. They've won, what is it? So four out of six last year. That's now eight out of the last 10 games against this team and a bunch of them here in this building. That's, we know they can do that. It's when the game is going to be tied a little bit longer, when they are going to get to that point where they're chasing the goal, what does it look like? Are they able to defend? Then the last part comes to the goaltender. The goaltender today, it's hit or miss. The second period, he was very good. In his first playoff start in a road atmosphere after giving up a bad one, like there was reason for this to kind of crumble for Logan Thompson, and it did not. He gives up two two goals in the first period, actually a third that comes gets called back from the offside challenge. Shout out to Rogowski for nailing that one yet again. Uh, You know that's not that's a thing where you can sit there and say, ah, I don't know what it's necessarily going to look like as he goes through that third goal. 
is really bad. And it could have potentially given the Stars more of a chance to win a game that they probably should not have had a chance to win. Moving forward, to me, I think Logan will just get better and better as he gets more opportunities. Is it concerning? Is it scary that, yeah, we have seen some of those goals? It wasn't tip chances that were beating them today, and and that's probably going to happen at some point as we push forward into the rest of this series. Yeah. Am I going to Hill? No, I'm not. I, I just don't think that's there's any way that that would make sense uh, to go to Aiden Hill. I just do not think uh, that's likely. One little tiny nugget that I want to pick up on that, I don't, I don't think I'm going to make a video. I think I'm going to say it right now and then wait until everyone else sees it moving forward. But a nugget that I've been asking players to do, and I think we finally saw a player do it. But first, before I tell you that, I'm going to tell you that every Periscope after games this season in the playoffs, and we will do them every single game after every single postseason game, is brought to you by the Jimerson Law Firm. The Jimerson Law Firm is one of Las Vegas' preeminent law firms specializing in high-stakes business, civil, and family litigation. When winning matters, seek out the Jimerson Law Firm. So, it's the second period. Vegas is attacking to my left. Uh, so it must have been the second period. I believe it was fairly late in the period. The Golden Knights had a pretty decent offensive zone shift where they had the puck down there. They were getting a couple looks. And it then got to the point where it appeared it was time to change. Uh Hurdle has the puck by himself near the blue line. There's nothing going on. There's nowhere to pass it. The only thing he can possibly do is just cycle it back in. Instead, Hurdle takes the puck and flings it way up into the air, into the back netting, and then steps off the ice before the puck had even hit the back netting. I don't think it was an accident. I think he's doing exactly what you should do in that situation. When it's time to change and you have nothing going on, especially after a halfway decent long shift, flip it into the net, get off the ice, and take the offensive zone draw. That's exactly what I think Tomas Hurdle did in that situation, and to see it happen is fantastic because that's the type of mentality. Those are the type of little plays that help you win games like that. That's how, instead of funneling the puck back in, giving them possession and forcing a change on the fly, allowing guys to now not have the puck when they come on the ice, now instead you're giving your coach an opportunity to put an offensive zone shift out there and give offensive zone players a potentially chance to get it right out in front of the goal. It's really, really smart. It was an excellent play, and I think he did it on purpose. So that's really awesome. Um, <clears throat> what else did I want to talk about today? Talked about reload. Oh, power play. So power play, obviously, it's two goals in, uh, <laughs> what was it, like a minute or so. Like, that's pretty awesome. The key to me in this particular power play was getting the puck to the net quickly. Uh, I don't think it's really anything beyond that. I don't think they've like solved their power play woes based on what has happened. Entries have been good pretty much all year. I would assume they will continue to be good because Jack Eichel's existence on the power play, they'll continue to exit or enter the zone fairly well. I think the the the, the draws, maybe they get a little bit better at that because Hurdle's going to be there. I don't know that that's going to make a huge difference. To me, the bigger part in this today was just getting the puck to the goal fast. That was the key. Get the puck to the goal as fast as they possibly can. That's what they needed to do. That's what they've needed to do over the course of the last, I don't know, three years. And to see them do it was beneficial. Now, I don't think the defending was very good on the situation that Stone got. I think there's normally going to be a body there, a stick there, something. That was not very good. That's probably going to be corrected by a very good uh defensive stars team secondly Chris Tanev makes a read that's wrong off of the draw he sees the draw lost and as opposed to going to the front of the net like you normally would do he thinks that puck's going to come around the boards and he's going to get to it and shoot it out that's not what ends up happening and he ends up leaving Tomas Hurdle directly in front of the goal this isn't like big body makes a big play or anything of that sort it's simply he makes a decision I'm going to the front Tanev makes a decision. They're going to rim it around. It doesn't happen. Now the rebound sits right out in front of him. Ottinger was not good today. Shout out to him having not a very good game after having, what, a month of dominant games. Uh, it's the second time he's allowed four goals or more than two than it was four in that game, too, in the last month. So for him to not have a good game, that's a shot where there's really not that much traffic in front of them. He probably should soak that thing up. Instead, he drops a rebound that is not only dropped directly in front of the goal, but he's not even there to be able to make the play. So 
that's the type of thing that I don't believe that that's like, wow, Hurdle has changed the power play. Hannafin has taken this puck, gone to the middle, and changed the power play. I don't think that's necessarily what happened. But I do like the shot mentality of saying, look, okay, we've got these opportunities. We know we're going to have Stone and, and Hurdle in front of the goal. Let's just put it there as opposed to trying to rely a little bit more on Eichel, finding that seam pass, utilizing that guy in the bumper. It has moved Marcia so out of the middle. We'll see what that looks like. I thought they were headed in the right direction with that. It's now moved that out. Marcia so is actually off of that line completely. Not sure I like that. Uh, so we'll see as we go forward. I do not expect them to suddenly be some deep, uh, you know, power play juggernaut, but it is good to see that puck getting to the goal, finding those opportunities and getting those chances as we go forward. If anybody has questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. Now, if you're watching on Twitter, you cannot comment as far as I know. So go to YouTube. It is youtube.com slash at Sinbin Vegas. Trust me. It's not that hard to find. You can find it. I believe in you. So if you have a question and you're watching uh, on YouTube, please send that thing in. While you do that, I'm going to go to my Twitter feed and try to load up some of the things I also wanted to talk about. Uh, let's see. What else were we talking about? Uh, Mark Stone getting mad. Yeah. Oh, game two. All right. Kevin, game two. Howden or Dorofiev. I do not believe they will change the lineup. I did not think that line was particularly effective in this game, especially offensively, but the Golden Knights were not all that effective. Uh, basically offensively much of the game outside of the first 21 minutes and 21 minutes and change or whatever it was. So I don't think they're going to go away from it mainly because you've got a pretty good defensive game. You were very structured. They were putting that line out there against good players and that was getting them that situation. They did get a little bit beat up on the, on the extended, on the, uh, the, the, the like fancy stats when uh, Stan Coven was out there. Fuck it. Hey, that kid's good. Like I underestimated how much of, a, of an impact he was going to make. That line was very good. Wyatt Johnston, Stan Coven and Ben, they were dangerous the entire night. Really good. The top line, I thought Stone and Hurdle did a pretty darn good job about again. So that is good. It's that second line that that's the one that if they can continue to keep that line down, and I thought they very much so kept that line down in this particular game, if you can keep down Marchment, uh, Sagan, and Duchesne, that's going to go a long way in taking some of that depth out. I didn't think the fourth lines had a huge impact in either way outside of, I guess, the penalty drawn 90 seconds into the game. Okay, we'll take that one, but also Carrier makes a horrible turnover. I did not think Carrier looked himself in this particular game. So that's where I'm at on that. Uh, is Martinez the next man up if Haig is up? I don't know about that. I think it might be Hutton. I would make the argument it should be Hutton. We will see. Uh, I'm not going to rule anybody out for that. Did I predict the Golden Knights to win in game one? I don't think I actually made a prediction uh, for game one now that I think about it. I do know that I would, when I was going over all the numbers, sending out all the stats, looking at all the stuff this morning and into the afternoon, I did have a feeling Vegas was going to win. When people asked me before the game today what the score was going to be today, I said Vegas 3-2 to two with an overtime goal from the Golden Knights. So I guess I did predict that right before the game, but I don't think I actually predicted it ever publicly, so I get zero credit for that. Uh, do I think the Golden Knights are in the star's head? I would still lean on no, but I think they're teetering towards nor nearly getting there. Like, I think it's a situation where if they can continue getting more good things to happen, then maybe we will get to that point where it's like, they're just going to look at this in Dallas and say, what the hell? We can't get something to go our way. This is bullshit. I think we're getting close to that, but I don't think we're quite there. What did I think of Petrangelo? Uh, I thought Petrangelo was solid. I don't think he was as in influential as he normally is in these particular games, especially in games where the Golden Knights are defending for a good portion of the game. I don't think he quite had that same level that we have seen and that I know we can see. I also thought, and we have seen this at times with the Golden Knights, at Theodore's best, at Petrangelo's best, usually the other one doesn't have as much impact. I thought Hannafin was much more of the like high event player in this particular game. And personally, I didn't think Hannafin's first period was all that good. Yes, he gets the assist. Yes, he's on the board, but I didn't think he was all that good. And then there's the play 
uh, where Stankoven goes up underneath Mark's or not, not, not. Yeah. Stankoven goes up underneath Mark Stone, passes it across Robertson scores. Like that's another play that that's an over aggressive play by Hannafin that he gets walked by Stankoven after a turnover. He's not expecting, but we've got the puck support there. We should be able to kind of diffuse that immediately and it doesn't happen. So I think you're going to get more and more out of Petrangelo, but I do think it's important to note that you typically do not have two alpha defensemen. It's not really how it normally works. So to have a situation where you don't have the two alpha defensemen or you do have them on the ice together, usually you're going to notice one more than the other. I thought today it was Hannafin more so than it was Petrangelo, and I think we'll get to that. Uh, How did I feel about the guys coming back? Um, I I thought Carrier was not very good. I thought Stone can be better, but certainly was good enough and obviously scores the goal. So he's fantastic there. Um, Stevenson, fine. You know, kind of just looked like the Chandler Stevenson we've had most of this season. Uh, Mantha, I thought that line was just all right. Defensively, much better. Mantha's actually growing on me once he's in the zone. uh, Defensively, a little bit better. So I like that. Do I see offensive struggles coming? I will say there is a bit of worry there. I I do think that the style of game that was played, the scoreboard, the fact that it's a road game in game one, all of that leads you to say like, okay, we're ahead. We don't have to push. We don't have to throw as many pucks on net. 15 shots, not that big a deal. They end up with not very many scoring chances, hardly any in front of the goal very limited number of chances, but I do think the score plays into that for Cassidy to come out and say, he didn't think there was all that much offensively and they're going to have to look at it and improve. That leads me to believe that, yeah, maybe they are going to have to see a little bit more. And I do think that there's a chance that, that, that if they're able to fall into this shot suppression shit situation, that DeBoer has shown us, he's been able to do at the golden Knights. They're very good here at, at it in Dallas. If that is the case, which it was for a good portion of this game, maybe they do struggle a little bit more offensively. So we will see as we go from there. I do not know that the defense is going to be all that much better than it was today. They they, they were in a good position there. They made it happen, and they, they got it done. Uh, do you think they were trying to give Stone the empty net goal? I do, and I don't. I do because I think that that was like – a couple of times they passed it to Mark Stone and it, it like looked like a great opportunity, but I also think that's like the right play uh, in that situation. I do think Logan Thompson will fix some of the mistakes, but I will stand by. I think it's going to come down to team defense, not goalie. That's going to make the difference. Uh, I just don't think that it's going to come down to this team's going to lose because their goalie isn't very good. Now, had it happened today, maybe we're saying that it's also his first playoff game. It's also a lot going on. I, I think, having all that traffic in front of him is going to be challenging and tricky. I think one thing about him that Cassidy kind of threw this out a little bit, he took it in a different direction than I'm going to, but he was talking about going back to the Vancouver game. They scored a couple of goals on the Golden Knights right in front of the goal. They were using a lot of bodies in front of the goal and really getting deep into his paint. Like they were getting into his body, getting in front of him. I think Logan's got to work a little bit more at making sure he's focused on the shot and the opportunity that's going to be coming to him as opposed to kind of trying to put his body in a position where he's likely to get goalie interference. I don't think they should be relying on goalie interference. If it happens, great. But if you can't really try to get the goalie interference, and I thought that we saw a little bit more of that. Uh, I do believe that, that Thompson will remain in the net uh, it does not smell like cow manure in the arena. I'm not entirely sure why it would. Uh, do they have rodeo here? I don't know. I, it, it doesn't. Uh, who's going to replace Haig? I would, I mean, it's going to be Martinez or Hutton for me. It should be Hutton. I could see it going either way. I would probably guess that it was going to, it would be Martinez. Uh, how would I change up the strategy for game two? I wouldn't much uh, at all. I would be a little bit more focused on how we're attacking. I would be a little bit more like trying to find ways to get some of the rush chances and trying to find ways to kind of take advantage of their swarming defense, especially immediately in the forecheck. If you can win one of those plays, get the puck down, down deep in the zone. And you have that you've got to switch sides quickly. I didn't think they switched sides very quickly all that often today. And you really look at the four goals. It's not necessarily like these are, 
great opportunities that are going to come over and over and over again. It's two tips. Uh, basically it's one tip and then the other one's a rebound on the power play. Not sure that that's like, that's how we're generating goals the rest of the postseason here. And then Marcia Sos is a, is a, is a rush chance that the goalie probably needs to stop. And the other one is just a very fortunate shot from nowhere near the goal that bounces off a guy and into the goal. So, uh, not so sure that any of that uh, we're going to get. I, I talked about this one earlier. I do not believe Dorofiev is going to go in for Howden uh, after that game. I think that that's, we're not going to see much. What adjustments do I think DeBoer is going to make in a game two? I think they might get even more aggressive with their defensemen. I think they might try to use their defensemen downhill in the offensive zone even more because the way that Vegas was breaking out was much more of short passes deep in the zone as opposed to trying to find that pass up the zone and hit that play out. They did not have a lot of players leaking out of the zone. That's something the Golden Knights have done in the past and have done very well at times where you'll see a loose puck kind of in the middle of the ice, maybe along the boards and somebody winger will leak out, try to kind of either bring a defenseman with him to stop them from pinching down or set up an opportunity to hit that long stretch pass. Vegas did very little of that today. Uh, that is something that I they usually do a little bit more. I think that that was something that they kind of guessed right maybe on Dallas, uh, that they're going to be aware of that and be ready to kind of send that defenseman out and not allow that chance. I think maybe you'll see a little bit more aggressiveness out of Dallas. Uh, I also think that just the style of game is going to change based on game state because of the fact that it's going to be hard for the Golden Knights to be leading for 59 minutes again. Like, unlikely that they're going to lead for the entire game once again. So that's going to, to kind of play a part of it as well. Once again, thank you to the Jimerson Law Firm for sponsoring all Periscopes. And thank you to Vegas Night, Night and Day Heating and Cooling for sending me to uh, Dallas for this game and the next game. And I'll probably be back for a game five. Hopefully there isn't a game five. We get to say that now. Hopefully there is not a game five. Do I believe Golden Knights will switch goalies at some point in the playoffs? I do. I think they will end up losing a game and making a switch. I do not believe that they will switch off a loss, at least early in a series right now. I do not think that's going to happen. Uh, thanks to Jeff saying, get me some Texas barbecue. I've already had it twice. I've gone to Heim and Hutchins. Both were fantastic. We might have to try a third one tomorrow. I don't know. I'm also golfing tomorrow, so good luck, hopefully, with the rented clubs and, and the new course and the, the trees and the Dallas. Hopefully, I do well. We will see. Uh, game time has not been posted for game four because we're still a ways away from game four. You could probably guess with it being a weekday, it's probably, it is a weekday, right? Wednesday, Saturday, yeah, back to Monday. It's probably going to be 6 or 7 p.m. Pacific time. So it's going to be uh, a late game local. Well, not that late locally, but it's certainly going to be late for everybody here in Dallas. Uh, I might, I don't know. I, I haven't decided if I'm actually going to write this or not. I do think that the time of this game benefited the Golden Knights. Um, they were able to come in on Sunday, yesterday, had one sleep, got up, practice at noon, which is 10 at home for the eight o'clock game, eight fifty game, which is actually six fifty at home, which is actually before the golden Knights normally drop the puck. So they weren't that far off from their normal uh, routine where I think that the normal routine for Dallas was way off. They had not played for about five days. Uh, they didn't look themselves right off the top. They take that early penalty. The penalty kill was a mess. I think that this game and the game time and the schedule and all the situation kind of fell Vegas's way and good on them for taking advantage of it. Good on them for making their own luck, making their own benefits from the refs, making their own bounces, throwing pucks on net and winning to the second opportunities or getting the good bounces, all of that. Good on the Golden Knights for doing all of that. Thanks again to the Jimerson Law Firm. Thanks to Vegas Night and Day Heating and Cooling. There will be articles up on the site. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to post one tonight. We will see. It's only one o'clock, so maybe we'll see. I might go home and write something. I don't know. And by home, I mean a hotel, Tropicana. I'm saying at the Tropicana. Um, we'll see if that comes up today. Uh, I don't have anything planned on Wednesday or between now and the next game in regards to audio. I may do something. I probably will do something on Thursday uh, while at the airport. So stick around for that. We'll probably do something on Twitter spaces print presented by Vegas night and day heating and cooling while I'm at the airport flights at like, uh, I got like a six o'clock flight or so. So we'll probably do that around 
three or four maybe uh, from DFW so I can get there early, sit down, do this, knock something out, feel like I'm actually making good of being here. Uh, we'll do that, but I'll, I'll give more information on that. That's it. Golden Knights win game one in regulation, four to three, led for all of the game, basically in the entirety of the game. Uh, that is what we're looking for. That's the type of defensive effort that is going to take. Defense is the key. Boring is the key. Do not play exciting games. Play defensive games, and the Golden Knights will find a way to not only win more games in this building, but find a way to win four to seven against this team. And then we can start looking forward. Winnipeg looked pretty good in that game. Dallas looked pretty bad. Their goalie's pretty bad. I don't want to go that far yet. It's just one win. The Golden Knights have won their first game on the road in a game one in any playoff series, which is wild considering how many playoff series that they have been in. Uh, we don't know what happens from here. We do know when they lose the first game, they can end up still winning the series. When they win their first game, they've been very good winning series. Let me get that number real quick before I get out of here. They've done a lot of that. A lot of winning game one and finding a way to then go on to win the series. Uh, that number is... Seven and two when they win the first game of the series. So pretty darn good. Seven and two is a nice number. Golden Knights are up one nothing in the series. Game two is on Wednesday. Again, stop complaining to me that the puck drops so late. I'm aware. I am here in Dallas where it was almost nine o'clock when they dropped the damn puck. And when they say 830, it ain't going to be 830. It's never been 830. It's never going to be 830. I don't know why they can't just tell us the time of the game, but they don't. So that is it for tonight. We'll see you on Wednesday night. Hopefully I golf well, and hopefully the next barbecue is even good as the previous two barbecues because I love barbecue. So much brisket. I have eaten maybe almost a full pound of brisket in two days. It's amazing. Awesome. Love it. That's it. Good night. See you later. Thanks, Jimerson Law Firm. Thanks, Vegas Night and Day Heating and Cooling. I've said that like a thousand times. The stream is over.